One of the first Ruby keywords that you learn is the require kernel method. If you've been using gems or built-in libraries, loading dependencies with require might seem to just work without a problem. But this is because Ruby knows where to find the files. What happens if Ruby tries to find source code that you have written yourself? In this learnable screencast, we'll see how to show Ruby where to find code by using Ruby's load path, something you need to understand when working on projects that consist of more than one file. We'll start with the question, can you require a Ruby file in the same directory? To see what I mean, let's create two files. First, shape.rb, which will define a shape class. Next, triangle.rb, which will attempt to require shape to create a child triangle class. So will this work? Let's give it a run. And the answer is no, cannot load such file, shape. Hmm. What if we refer to shape.rb by specifying the current directory? We'll just add a dot slash to the beginning of shape. It works. But something's not right about this. Let's take a look at an example gem. As you can see, the source files don't refer to their intragem dependencies relative to the current directory. Instead, they act as if Ruby already knows where they are. Let's go back to our terminal. If we run Ruby with the help flag, there is a useful option for this situation. Dash capital I, specify load path directory. All right, so if we change our require statement back to just plain shape and use this flag passing it the current directory, it should work. And it works. So what is load path? In Ruby, an identifier starting with a dollar sign is a global variable. If we run interactive Ruby, we can see what load path contains by default. And it looks like it's an array of absolute paths. So in triangle.rb, let's add to load path the directory containing shape.rb, in this case, the current directory, before the require statement. Then Ruby will know where to find the shape file without needing the load path modifier flag. Note that if we go up a directory and try to run triangle.rb again, it will not work because the dot refers to the Ruby process's current working directory, not the directory of the source file. The same is true when requiring a direct path from the current working directory, like we did before. As a Ruby 1.9, we do get access to the require relative method, which allows us to specify files relative to the source file without relying on the current directory. However, you won't encounter this being used very often, because as we'll see, there's a better way. Let's look at a more complex scenario. It turns out that Ruby gems are just source code hierarchies installed in a directory that ends up in load path. But what about when you're working on a gem, or some other large project where you've got source code nested several folders deep? Here I've got a gem-like directory layout. At the root level, there's a lib folder for source code, in a test folder to verify that the code works. Ideally, any code in the test folder will be written as if the library is already installed. For that to work, we need to add the contents of the lib folder to Ruby's load path. If you look at the code for just about any gem, you'll see a couple of common idioms. First, there is a commonly used and not obvious alias for load path, dollar sign colon. Second, file expand path is used to get the directory of the lib folder. File expand path converts a relative path to an absolute one. It takes two arguments. First, the relative path, and second, the starting path. Let's add these Ruby idioms to our test file. First, let's store the path to the lib directory in a variable using file expand path. Notice the second argument. The double underscore file constant stores the relative path to the current file. So we're saying, give me the absolute path to lib from the current file. Don't be confused by the extra dot dot. It's a bit counterintuitive, but it will be stripped. That is, a single dot dot refers to the same directory, and two refers to one directory up. Next, we'll unshift this path to the beginning of load path using its dollar sign colon shorthand. 
and if the test file is run, it works. Let's go back over what we've learned so far. The require statement only works with files that are already in Ruby's load path. The load path is stored in a global array of absolute path strings called load path. Directories can be added to the load path by simply calling loadpath.unshift with an absolute path. Paths around a source file can be obtained using file expand path with double underscore file as the second argument. Relative to file, double dot dot slash lib refers to a lib folder one directory up, not two as it would seem. As of Ruby 1.9, require relative can be used to load a source file relative to another source file, but this is rarely used in practice. But what about load, you might be wondering? What's the difference between requiring a file and loading it? If you attempt to require a file more than once, it will not work the second time. This helps to prevent attempting to redeclare constants such as class names. Load is different in a couple of ways. First, it needs the full file name, but not the full path, so it's a bit counterintuitive. Second, it loads the file every time you call it, unlike require. This could be useful if you need your source code to overwrite and reload itself because you're trying to start judgment day. Then again, everyone knows real terminators use C++ because it's so complex it needs to be sent into the future to be compiled. And there you have it. Hopefully now you know a little more about using multiple source files in Ruby, and you're well on your way to working on larger projects.